Now, if there's one conversation most people perhaps try and avoid with their parents, it could be the topic of sex, of course, but our next guest do not shy away from such conversations. Dr. Janet and Ella Hall, uh, mother and daughter sex experts, would you believe? They're on a mission to educate, empower, and to uh, permission, of course, for women and men to live their most liberate, also uh, pressure-filled and powerful lives, pleasure-filled, I should say. Dr. Jan and Ella join us now live. How are you going? Hi. Very well. It's been a long time since my mother tried to have this conversation with me and perhaps the a long time as well since I've had a conversation with a woman about these things as well. But good morning to you both. Talk to us about how you ended up in this situation. Well, I'm a qualified psychologist working for 40 years in clinical psychology, specialising in sex therapy with, with many books and audios. Um, and uh, in about five years ago, Ella was uh, beginning to uh, blossom into this amazing tantric sexpert. And I had one case, and we'll call her Susie, a mother of five children, and Susie was 36, and she said, Dr. Jan, I've never had an orgasm. So over a year, I helped Susie get rid of all the limiting beliefs about um, why she couldn't have an orgasm. And she had started to use a vibrator, and it took her 50 minutes. And so I handed everything over to Ella, and I said, please, what can we do for Susie now? Now, is this a common conversation you think that mothers and daughters have? Ella, what's your side of the conversation on this? Because I think there'd be a lot of you know, daughters who'd say that they might not ever have this kind of conversation with their mum. What do you think is the, the benefit of being open about these things? Well, this is exactly where it's at because I grew up in a very liberated household. Um, mum, you know, first found me pleasuring myself when I was three and I she said, you know, with no shame, you know, we do this when we're alone. And I said, well, please leave the room. So even then I had all this permission, but growing up in today's society, I was not immune to body shame, body dysmorphia, um, comparis comparison to other people, the other taboos around sex and, and sexuality. So I kind of grew up feeling quite confined in my own body. And so I teach my own medicine, everything that I teach comes from me liberating my own self mm. and the sacred sexuality component of my life was really um, taking the handbrake off the Ferrari that had been sitting in the driveway. And when I did that, what happened was Jan, who was the busy woman stuck in her head, she also liberated herself because this is just the software, right? The actual wisdom lives inside our heart and our sex. And when both yeah. of those elements are speaking together, we can really start rocking our lives. And it's so interesting as well, Dr. Janet, when we talk about um, the stigma that we have about talking about these conversations. And it is somewhat of a cultural thing. Probably we go back to our you know, English heritage where instead of talking about sex, we have a lovely cup of tea. Um, how do you think that that impacts mm. the way that we behave, the way that we feel about ourselves? And also the fact is, you know, human beings, um, just like I guess any animal out there, are sexual beings. And when we try and put a lid on it all, quite often it can lead to big problems down the track? Well, the biggest problem is the pornography in industry. And mm. that's where so many younger people are learning about sex. Well, you've I actually just the... taken me to my next point. That was the next point I was oh. going to get to because studies have actually found that a lot of young people these days aren't having sex. They're not doing the experimenting because of pornography. Yes, and the young men who are doing that from the age of 11 are finding by the time they're 18 and perhaps, you know, want to have a relationship, they can't get an erection. Which is yeah. something that I suppose, what, what would you say the reason is for that? Would you say it's because um, the fantasies that you see in pornography, for example, um, they don't perhaps want to play out, they can't, they don't have the confidence to even ask? Is it impacting confidence of young men and therefore is it impacting, you know, girls on the other side or boys on the other side, depending on what you're into? Absolutely. And the other problem, I call it watch and wank, is that these men are masturbating to what they see on the pornography. Um, and so they've basically just lost all ability to relate to a really warm, willing woman. So Ella, talk to us about, you know, from your perspective as well, you know, when we talk about both head and heart simultaneously being important for success um, and the links that you see to, to being about sex as well. 
Well, exactly what we were just talking about when you guys were talking about the porn issue. That's true for men. That is, they get stuck in their head. The firing and wiring isn't working properly. Porn is as, is as addictive as crack cocaine. Mm. It literally wires and fires the body in a way that is detrimental. It takes you into the fantasy. But women, we're stuck in this thing called busy woman syndrome, where we're also disconnected from our body. So you can imagine there's all of these people, men and women alike, walking around stuck in their head. And this is why, like, the very traditional therapies of um, counselling, how do you feel about that and talk to me about your issues, those things can kind of stick us in here and all of a sudden we're very intelligent without the means, the tools, the skills to be able to bring ourselves out of what is misfiring because you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created the problem. We've got to come back to the intrinsic wisdom of our own healing ability, our embodiment. We have a mind, we have a physical body, we have emotions and we have energy and all of them need to come into alignment. So when I discovered Tantra, I realized it was biohack technology to bring all of these bodies into alignment fast, safe, healthy and in my pleasure which made me feel really powerful really clear so that's why jan and i realized when you combine the head she gets to sort of get people ready to go okay so now i've come as far as i can here and i can't solve the problem with the mind that created it mm. now i need to go and have a more embodied holistic experience of looking at myself as a whole complete being that's where the transformation will be fast and it will be lasting yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll leave it there. Janet and Ella, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us.